everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I'm going to take some of my leftover dye stocks. Dye stocks that are near the end of the amount of color that I have left, and we're going to use those to create a layered tonal on some yarn, specifically 300 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool, and it's currently dry. And I figured we may as well dye the first layer dry. This means we're gonna get a lot more tonal variation in that first color. But I should take a step back. When I say I wanna do a layered tonal colorway, what I mean is that I want to kettle dye yarn, create a tonal layer of yarn, but do it in multiple steps, adding a different color each time. And so what this is gonna do is, for example, if we have a green on here, the green may be more saturated in some areas, less saturated in others. Then if we layer on a navy, the navy will be more saturated in some places and less on others. So we're gonna get different proportions of, say, a navy and a green as they get on the yarn, giving us a tonal feel, but with a lot of different hues in here. And it's one of my favorite ways to create color. And well, let's see what we can end up with today. I plan to dye up three layers of color today, but I have four dye stocks here. And that's because I'm planning to combine two of them for our first layer. The four colors we will be using today, as I put on my gloves just off camera, are Dharma's Brilliant Yellow, and you can see that there's a little bit on the outside of the bottle there. Uh, Dharma's Radioactive, which is a fluorescent green. Uh, Dharma's Dark Navy. And then our Teddy Bear Brown. Now, this particular container right here holds 500 milliliters of liquid. And by looking at it, I would say maybe I have 50 milliliters here. There's not a ton of pigment here overall, but we should have enough to get a really pretty medium toned color is my guess. But I'm not measuring anything. Before I bring in the pot, I am gonna rinse the bottom of that container. Now all the tools and equipment I use for dyeing yarn are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are never used for the preparation of food. Um, and when I store dye stocks, I store them inside a secondary container. And so I guess when I say primary container and secondary container, the primary container is the one that's actually holding the dye stock, this one that I have right here that I'm working to rinse out. Um, and actually we can spray the top edge of this as well to get some of that dried dye off. Uh, the secondary container is a plastic shoe box that I store everything in. And the reason why I store it in a secondary container is because sometimes you can have some color uh, that is maybe on the outside of your bottle. And if you were to put it on a surface, you could stain it, just like I showed you right here. And the tape is not gonna peel off easily. We'll worry about that later. Okay, in this layer, I'm also gonna add the radioactive. Another thing I do for my bottles, even though the tape may not always come off easily, is I fold the edge of the tape over so then in theory I can pull it off, but it is currently July and I made this stock back in uh, November. So clearly my tape is sticking around. There's not very much of this color left, but again, I'm gonna fill the bottle. Now sometimes, just like you could see dried powder on the outside of the bottle, Sometimes that can happen on the inside edges as well. Some dye can come out of solution and maybe will settle on the bottom of the container. So I call this the dregs of our color. And so sometimes uh, colors can actually get a little bit more concentrated as you go towards the end. But anyway, I'm now gonna fill up this pot to be about half full maybe. And now I'm coming over with my white vinegar and I'm adding a very healthy splash. A lot of times I measure things so that way I can say to you, this is the proportion of vinegar to water that you need. But at some point you can start to eyeball it and get a good feeling for it and that's totally okay as well. So now I'm bringing over our yarn and Radioactive is a color that breaks, so we could get some breaking here. Um, 
What was I gonna say? But also, we're gonna get some uneven color absorption just due to the fact that the yarn is currently dry. And so it may suck up those colors in a few different ways. But actually, you can see there's very little color left in here. Uh, I would say that the yellow tends to strike pretty quickly. That last little bit of color, maybe some of the neon yellow. Because within radioactive, there is some fluorescent yellow in there as well. So there's definitely some areas that are a little more blue and a little more yellow on here, but overall, the coverage is way more even than what I was expecting. Of course, things are cold. Uh, <laughs> So that can be a factor, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over to my stove so we can start heating it up We are nice and hot and I just reduced the heat. Ooh, I feel like I Should do the navy next So I think the brown is gonna be our deepest color And I have no idea where the color is gonna end up, but yes, you can see how we have tonal variation here in this layer. Navy is a color that can strike pretty quickly. So we'll see how this is gonna go. Okay, I'm gonna add what was in the dye container. Okay, and then rinse out what was in here, trying to get that little bit that was on the side. Now I know that this looks pretty dark, but there really isn't that much pigment in here. Of course, we will see, oh, one of my zip ties came undone. That's what I felt. Okay, I'm gonna replace that one before I add the yarn in. And I know this is all off camera, but I can show you over time, because those zip ties are reusable, then even without pressing it, they can get loose. And that's when I move on. Okay, I've got my tongs within reach. We are coming in and adding the yarn quickly. Oh, there is way more pigment than I thought. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's not that much. But there was a lot more than I expected. Oh, well, that's fun. Gosh. Because there weren't that many milliliters of dye in there. And you can see that it is striking super fast because the dye bath is clearing a bit and I see a fair amount of yellow in here. Uh, if we had less acid and we had a colder dye bath, we would have had a lot more coverage. But, oh, this is fun. I didn't set a timer the last time I put the yarn in, and I'm only gonna set one now to remind me to come back, but let's wait 15 minutes and then we'll do our brown layer. But this is so pretty. Now, dark navy is a color that glazes well, so it can strike fast. Teddy bear brown is the same way. So we may have some of these yellow patches peeking through in the end. Maybe not, but we might still have them but I'll see you in 15. All right, it has been a little over 15 minutes, because life happens, but all the color is in our yarn. Now with these first two layers, I did not shift the zip ties at all. And by that, I mean the same part of the yarn went into the dye bath first. This time I'm gonna take the yarn, shift the zip tie down, a portion of the skein, maybe moving it down about halfway. I was gonna try to do this all on camera, but the yarn is hot and I need gravity to help me with this a little bit uh, to make sure I don't tangle anything. Whew. This way, another area of the yarn will go in first. But you can already see, even with it being steamy, that we have a lot of beautiful tonal variation in here. I suppose the thing, as I put my gloves back on, the thing I should remember about the navy dye is that the navy container, that, that bottle where I had the dye stored, was a liter bottle versus a 500 milliliter one. And so we may have had just a lot more navy than I thought. 
He is still on, believe it or not. It's just on low. One thing I am doing is stirring this before we bring in the yarn. Uh, if you don't stir, you can end up with some variation of color as well. But now let's go in. Ooh. I have no idea what this is really going to do to our color. Now, one other variable that we have going on here is that our pot is fairly crowded with 300 grams of yarn. And so therefore, our dyes are going to access some parts of the yarn more than others, which is why we lift and stir and separate. But there's still some really, really lovely subtlety in here. Oh, and this is making it so neutral. I wonder if it's going to feel green overall or what it's going to feel like. I don't think I've done this combination. I certainly haven't done this combination layered like this before. But now I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit and let's heat for 30 minutes. It has been 30 minutes now and this color is so fun. Ooh, we really do see, I see blues, browns, and greens in here. I am really obsessed. I don't think I would have normally thought to combine brown and navy in this layered way, but I'm so glad that I did. Now, once again, I did not measure the amount of acid we had in our dye pot today. Uh, if you want the dyes to spread over the yarn more, have less acid in there. Uh, but part of the fun is just seeing all of these colors. And yes, things are muted, but this is a very neutral variegated yarn. And oh, it's so pretty. All right. Now I just need to set the yarn aside so it can cool completely before we wash it. And I will be honest, sometimes uh, it only takes a couple of hours, but it can take at the least a couple of hours for the yarn to cool off. Other times I'll just go ahead and wait overnight and then wash yarn for a lot of different projects back to back. There is a little bit of color left in the dye pot. You can see it's a little bit yellow. Most of the color is in the yarn, so this is not something I'm going to worry about. Let's wash our yarn. I don't know why I'm getting seaweed vibes a little bit. I mean, the color is too dark to really be seaweed, but that just popped in my head. I added a little dish soap, and I always rinse off these aluminum pans after. Acid will degrade the aluminum over time, and so rinsing them just helps them last longer. But I keep using them until they need to be recycled. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Wonderful! It's like I get so excited when I lift the yarn and there's no color, and I squeeze it and there's no color. Most of the time, over 90% of the time, I don't see color bleeding. Now, one thing I didn't talk through today was kind of estimating the total amount of dye that I probably had left in those containers and knowing that it was a reasonable amount to use on 300 grams of yarn without overdoing it. Because I think that it's really, really easy to overdo the amount of dye that you use when you're dyeing yarn, especially if you're used to dyeing cotton, where I still use way too little dye because I'm so used to using wool and I don't want to use too much. But cotton needs a lot of dye uh, to give you vibrant colors. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this beauty, oh look at that, into my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. This yarn is gorgeous. And I'm not filming these conclusions that long after I dyed it. And so I do remember that we had a bit of a yellow green, maybe fluorescent, uh, and then we had navy and I think teddy bear brown. I could be mistaken though, but that's what my gut says. But this combination created something so magical. And sometimes just having a good proportion of acid or a pot that's a little more crowded can help those colors bind to the yarn a little bit unevenly. So then when you layer them all together, you get these shifts of color and this is gorgeous. Okay, I am not expecting fluorescence and I'm not plugged in, so that won't work. 
I'm not expecting any fluorescence, but I figured past me would have wanted me to check. And you know, there's a little bit when I bring the light really close to isolated areas, you can see a hint of that shining through. I wouldn't call this yarn fluorescent because that is so minor, but it's there. I'm not bringing over the black light, but you can't make a fluorescent navy because those navy pigments are so pigmented that they're not, they're going to absorb, I think, they'll, I think they'll absorb whatever light you get from the fluorescence so you're not going to see anything. So you really need to be able to see a lot of the color that is fluorescent. But you can mix fluorescent colors together, like say fluorescent green and fluorescent orange, and make a color that feels less neon and more neutral that'll still glow under a black light. So you can mix things together, but there are some combinations like black light blue and fluorescent fuchsia that if you mix them together, even though everything has fluorescence, it, the colors interact in a way that you won't see it. They'll quench each other. Um, and so that's a bit of a bummer. But anyway, this is just a minor point in today's video. I now need to go twist this yarn up. Sometimes yarn looks prettier twisted up. I thought this was pretty before, but I think that twisted up, it gives another awesomeness. <laughs> My vocabulary is excellent today, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I love to share the magic that you can create with color and yarn. And sometimes you can put a lot of thought into the color combinations you wanted to use. Other times you may look at what you have and decide to throw it together and end up somewhere that you couldn't have predicted. Now I don't have the proportions of these colors. I could probably estimate uh, the amounts if I go back and like look through the video. But I think I could try to play with a recipe and end up with somewhere similar if I wanted to at some point. Because at least I know the names of the colors that I used, which is not always the case with leftovers. But uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to see where we can end up. And if you enjoy the journey and want to bring some yarn home, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, my shop is filled with yarn that's been featured in my videos, which I think makes the yarn really unique because you can go watch exactly how I made it. But of course, the biggest thing you can do to help support all of the content here on Chemnitz is to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss new videos. It is completely free and helps tell the almighty algorithm that you like my content and so then they're more likely to recommend it to other people. And you can always join to become a channel member and get some really fun Chemnitz emotes that you can use in live chats or in the comments section and you'll get a cool badge next to your name. But seriously subscribing and commenting on the videos, all those free things are the biggest thing you can do to help everything here. Thank you so much for watching.